Welcome to A Better HR Business, the podcast that looks at how HR consultants and HR tech firms grow their businesses and how they help their employers to get the best out of their people. Remember, for show notes and downloads, go to www.getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. That's getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. Okay, let's get started. Hello, thanks for joining me again today. I am flying solo today, so nice to have your company. I wanted to look at something that is really important, but it's probably not discussed so much these days, and that is the big question of, should you still publish a company blog? Because we've got the uh, the rise of the TikTok videos and um, every new live function under the sun for LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and then Clubhouse has come along, all those sort of things. So it sort of prompts the question, should you still be publishing a company blog? And I was having a think about this the other day and I was reading an article uh, on the HubSpot blog, which is probably a hint in itself. But I was on the HubSpot blog there uh, looking at, I think it was called 31 business blogging stats you needed to know for 2021, something like that. And it had a nice line in there that blogging is such a scalable and affordable approach that it's the third most commonly uh, used content marketing strategy for businesses. And marketers that prioritize blogging see 13 times the ROI of businesses that don't. So again, there's a pretty big hint. But I wanted to run through some of the other statistics that I saw in that article. So let me just run through them and then I'm going to share some of my thoughts and uh preferences and some things for you to consider if you're going to go forward with blogging um, or to help you make that decision. So half of the top 200 Fortune 500 companies have a corporate blog in 2018. So that's an old number, but they'd still be, uh, I would say, the same numbers, if not higher. 80% of internet users interact with both social media sites and blogs. 59% of marketers find blogging valuable. Blogs can result in a 434% increase in indexed pages and a 97% increase in indexed links. What that means is uh, your website will get found um, by Google and put in their little index in their library. So it's a 434% increase in the number of pages and 90%, 97% increase in the links. Companies with blogs produce an average of 67% more leads monthly than companies that don't blog. That's a that's a big one. I've got to say that one again. Companies with blogs produce an average of 67% more leads monthly than companies that don't blog. That's a big one. Blogging is the third most common content marketing strategy after video and ebooks. And about half of marketers listed blogging as their top priority. I suspect that's probably decreased in the last year or two. Uh, with the rise of video possibly and things like Clubhouse. But again, it was it's easily half. 90% of businesses use content marketing tactics such as blogging. So 90% of businesses. Businesses that blog get 55% more website visitors than businesses that don't. So if you've got a uh, business website that doesn't get much traffic and you don't have a blog, there could be a reason why. If you've got a blog, it's... Businesses that blog get 55% more website visitors, more traffic to the website. Marketers who prioritize blogging received 13x more ROI, so 13 times the return on investment than companies that did not uh, in 2019. 88% of bloggers who gate content uh, report some strong results from blogging. 35% report very strong results. So when you gate content, that means... You've got an article there. If you would like to read more, put in your name and an email address and you'll be able to download or we'll send you the PDF. You know, So that's called gating content. So 88% of bloggers who gate content get strong results from that. That's what they report. 70% of people would rather learn about a company through articles than through advertisements. Okay, that makes pretty good sense. You don't want to be sold. You want to learn about a company and the products and great way for that to happen is through articles rather than through ads. The average blog post is 1,236 words. So if you're writing short little posts that are 400 words long and you're wondering why you're not appearing in Google, it's because it's very hard to get much value out of a 400 word uh, blog post. So the average blog post is 1,236 words. Uh, Many business bloggers argue that listicles or list articles are the most popular blog post format. 
uh, you know, so the top 10 reasons why your employee retention issue is getting worse or the top 10 reasons for manager problems with your workforce, whatever it may be, but top 10, top 5, 15, 25, whatever it may be. Uh, and strangely enough, I keep hearing that an odd number is better uh, in general rather than a re- uh, an even number, except something like top 10 is obviously pretty powerful. Uh, yeah, so 55% of bloggers say that they see results from blog posts with 2,000 words or more. So if you can go in depth, you can get a really uh, impactful article which can, which can share information, which shows off your expertise and can potentially lead to um, sales inquiries, demo requests, if you've got software, contact us forms filled in, that sort of thing. So a 2,000 piece, 2,000 word piece is going to be more effective generally. So there's some of the, the statistics that I saw in that article when I was reading through it, and, and you know they strike me as being true, accurate. A couple of them are a few years old, but I stand by them. I think they are effective. For me personally, blogging has been so powerful, either for me, my businesses, or client uh, companies that I've worked with and work with uh, today. Blogging is very, very powerful. Some of the reasons why blogging is good, it's a great place to showcase your expertise and your knowledge. You know, so you can only talk to so many people at a time, one to one. Having a blog is a wonderful spot to showcase your thoughts, some of your track records, some case studies, uh, advice for people who are further along um, the buying process, or if they're at just the start of that sales funnel. You know, they're still just kicking the tires and having a look around. Well, this is a great way for you to show off what you know and what you can potentially do for them. It's good for SEO. So SEO is search engine optimization. In other words, you may appear in Google when someone types in a particular phrase, how do I improve my workplace culture? If you've got a really good useful article on that and you followed good SEO practice and all kinds of stuff like that, then you may rank high for that. That means that if 500 people per month are searching for that and you're at the top of that list, you could potentially get 500 uh, new visitors to your uh, website every month. Write another blog post that's just as effective for another keyword that's also worth 500. Suddenly you've got 1,000 people coming along. Now, there's a lot that goes into it, but you see what I mean. Without having that blog content, it's pretty hard to rank for stuff. And so, that, therefore, Google sees you as invisible. You know, you're just floating out there in the Ethernet. So having a blog and regularly updated blog articles is good for SEO. Uh, it's better to, in my opinion, it's better to bring people to your website than send them off to a LinkedIn post or a Facebook post or an Instagram, send them to some other website. Uh, And there are advantages to having followers on Twitter and LinkedIn and so on. But bringing them to your own website is good. It's your home. They can then start to look around. It's like bringing someone into a shop. They browse around, have a look at the shirt, have a look at the trousers, that kind of stuff. Maybe they buy something. Maybe they buy something else as well. They may fill in your contact form. They may look about the About Us or your services and think, oh, Wow, we either need them now or when we need them, this is the firm that we may potentially contact. So that's why I like to have them visiting your website than a third party platform. So you've got a bit more control. You can also run retargeting ads or remarketing ads for people who visit your website. So those are the ads that follow you around the internet. So if someone comes to your website, you can then have an ad that follows them around showing them this particular service page that you uh, that they landed on. So if they've been looking at your, I don't know, diversity and inclusion services page, you can then have DNI ads that follow them around the internet in a nice way, not a stalky way. Um, but yeah, that, that's entirely possible. And so that is a highly targeted ad to someone who's very interested in the service you offer, like who's going to be looking up diversity and inclusion services providers and looking at a website unless they're pretty much in that uh, red hot buying zone uh, for your potential services okay the other good thing about having a blog is you can offer lead magnets there you know, pdfs free ebooks charts software i mean um could be software spreadsheets you know stuff that you can give away to them that offers help provides value is inf- informational interesting uh, but they would give that in that gated format that I mentioned earlier. So they give them your name and email in exchange for it. So that's a way of building up your mailing list, your newsletter list. You can embed videos. So if you're going to record yourself talking about a particular topic, yeah, you can post it on LinkedIn and get some interest in that, but you can reuse it in the article. 
It also means that someone who's reading the article might go more in depth and stop and listen to you talking, which increases your connection. You probably heard that whole know, like, and trust combination. Well, this is a great way to do it. They see you there talking about it, and they think, wow, this person knows what they're talking about. I think we could use them. We could work with them when we try to solve our problems. You can cross-promote articles, your services, special offers, whatever it may be, uh, and call to action embedded. If we go back to that diversity and inclusion article example, you might halfway through the article say, by the way, if you've got an issue that you'd like to work through with us, click this button here and it'll bring up a call to action of a contact us form or something like that. Fill it in, we'll get in touch. So it's a great way to have a uh, contextual advertisement that's very, very targeted to the people that, who are visiting that page. The other thing, the reason why I like blog and the blog posts is not everyone wants to watch a video or listen to a podcast. And it's outrageous, I know. I mean, here you are listening to a podcast, so I can't believe there are people who wouldn't. But anyway, um, for those weird people who wouldn't listen to podcasts, and to be honest, I'm a person who doesn't like watching videos too much, I would much rather read the article. Okay, so there are many, many people out there who don't want to watch a video uh, being recorded where you're talking about something, they just like to read it. So blog is perfect for that. And secondly, if you have a podcast, you can then have an article for each episode where you can share the highlights and the, the keynotes and things like that. So you can have the best of both worlds. Another good thing about having a blog is you've got content that you can use on LinkedIn. You don't have to sit there every Monday morning or Sunday or whatever thinking, oh gosh, what am I going to write about this week? What story can I tell? What photo do I show of my dog? You know, you've got stuff that you can talk about. You can share the article you've written or take quotes from it, things like that. You know, it's an evergreen source of interesting stuff for your ideal target market. You can also link to it in email newsletters. If you've got a monthly newsletter, that's perfect for sharing within that. And then the other great thing about blogs is that they're evergreen. Uh, so it you know can potentially last forever. The article that I was reading you earlier, or some of the quotes, those statistics, the article um, was called 31 Business Blogging Stats You Need to Know in 2021. But the actual URL, the web link for that article was uh, hubspot.com marketing business blogging in 2015. You wouldn't even notice it, but if you look into that URL, the year was 2015. So what is that? That's evergreen content. They wrote that article in 2015 and called it something like business blogging stats you need to know in 2015. What have they done? Every year they've gone in and updated it, added new statistics, um, deleted ones that are no longer relevant, added in new stuff, changed the year. That's evergreen content. And so when I typed into Google, um, the search term of should you still publish a company blog or something along those lines, this article appears from 2015. You know, so the current year is 2021. Blogging can be evergreen. If you get it right, it can stick there and you will get traffic, visitors who are interested in what you do and what you offer. It's such a powerful tool in that regard. Things to consider. It, it is hard work in the sense that you, you can't just write one little blog post and it's all done. You do need to stick at it. Ideally, you would do more than one a month. You could do one a week, whatever it may be. The other bit is you saw some of the average lengths for it to be effective. Uh, I think it was average of 1,200 words or 1,236 words for an average blog post. So if you are shorter than that in terms of the blog uh, word count, then you're below standard. Even better, they got the best results at around the 2,000 mark. So if you really want to go into it in depth uh, and do deep dives, you're going to have more of an impact and it's going to be more successful for you in just in terms of those statistics and some of the guidelines I mentioned. Um, so it does take work to do that. Um, so I would say get smarter about it, whether you write that, whether you get someone else to write it for you. There are lots of different ways. With some of our clients, we interview them and then um, our writers write them up. Other ones, it's um, list posts where uh, either we or they or however it works come up with bullet points and then we you know, flesh them out. There are all sorts of different ways of doing it. Another big aspect to consider is distribution or promotion. So it's not enough just to write something and then hope that everyone's gonna to flock to it and think, wow, this is the best thing since sliced bread. You need to work at getting the word out there, sharing that article. And you know, we've talked about 
share anything on a LinkedIn, Facebook, or email newsletters, things like that. Um, so you've got to think about how can I get the word out there? It's not just a case of write it and forget about it. In terms of SEO and getting found by Google for those blog posts, you do have to think about how best to structure it, keywords you're going to use, repeating them, having images, things like that. And also you might want to look at what is currently ranking in top position for what you're going to be writing about and look at that as a role model and say, well, I was planning to write 500 words on this particular thing, but wow, the winner is got, has got 2,500 words. They've got pictures, some charts, some graphs, etc. I'm going to have to do at least that to have a chance of ranking. And then I need to work about, work out how am I going to distribute it, promote it, get the word out there about it. But like I said, if you get it right, the SEO rankings can be so good for you uh, for, in terms of bringing in traffic, leads, qualified traffic, etc. And also, it can reveal some secrets. You might find that you're ranking for keywords and things like that that you'd never considered. And you might spin out uh, a new article and produce something new specifically on that, which brings you a whole new set of traffic still related to your uh, business or service types. But you'd never know if you didn't have that content in the first place. So. Uh, it, it's you know, very effective in that regard. Other things to consider are what, what lead magnets will you produce to make use of those traffic to have gated content? Um, how will you repurpose stuff? So as I mentioned, you can have it the other way around, do a podcast and then write an article about it or do it in reverse, but just do it right and you'll have a much more effective approach. All right, I hope that helps and all the best with it. Thanks for joining us today on A Better HR Business, the podcast that explores the world of HR consulting and HR tech businesses. For show notes and downloads, go to www.getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. That's getmorehrclients.com forward slash podcast. Remember to subscribe and share the show with any friends who are busy growing a HR business. Thanks and see you next time.